Hello and welcome out to this week's episode of Outbreak Gamers. I'm your host, Web Dave, David Anthony, and I am here with one of the amazing Iron Lords, Lord Addict. How you doing, sir? Doing pretty good. I appreciate the invite. I really like your uh, your your background. You know, I might have to make something close to that because it looks nice. Oh, thanks, thanks. I do have to confess, my uh, my daughter, uh, she's 22, and she is a floor manager at the Malco. Uh, it's just a movie chain, movie theater, and she gets me these cool posters back here that I get to. Oh, that's them, cool. So. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, they do look pretty cool. Yeah, it's it's nice. I, I like that a lot. Um, well, man, this is awesome. I tell you, um, I've I've been fortunate enough to talk to the other Iron Lords, and uh, and they all, and I and I mean every single one of them, uh, were were adamant about uh, about how the, the Iron Lords wouldn't be the Iron Lords they are today without you. You seem like the cornerstone, and I know you. Uh, you may you may think, "Whoa, what?" But uh, but no, it's uh, it's a uh, it's a nice compliment, and they've all and they've all given it. Uh, so I like to. I wonder how I'm trying to put you on the spot or anything. Like no, nah, we, we we all have our uh, strengths and weaknesses. We bring to the podcast. Exactly, exactly, exactly. Well, apparently, some of your strengths uh, definitely make it all work, and everything get the, to go together. So, uh, and as a fan of of your show. Uh, and the marathon podcast you guys put out it's uh, they're pretty awesome pretty amazing for sure yeah definitely uh sometimes too long if you ask me but, uh, <laughs> i would imagine the question that uh, that a lot of people i've heard ask are like you know man how do they take bathroom breaks like well, you just turn the mic off and <laughs> turn the camera off and just mm-hmm. run for it and come back that's pretty much what you got to do right yep <laughs> so um i guess let's let's get things uh, started with um I always like to ask this just kind of gives a, a grounding of people uh, like maybe like what was your first job that you ever did? And we're talking just a regular job job. Um, I worked at a couple of fast food places. Can't remember which one's first. I think Arby's is the first one I ever had. Mm-hmm. I was like 19, 18. Yeah. Yeah. So if I so a fast food guy, I've, I've done that yeah. a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. That's cool. So um, I guess um, with your, um, with with the podcast and stuff that you're doing now um i guess how did you get into um you know to, to i guess the 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 whole youtube and stuff like that did that uh, was that something you just kind of stumbled upon or or, or how, did, how did things fall together for that um i was looking to do something else i was bored and i knew that i had a passion for games mm-hmm. this is like 2012 13 uh the the platform just came out and I think I, I started making videos in like late 2014. Uh, you know, I, I, what's funny is like, I put a lot of thought into it, but people are right when it comes to stuff like um, making content, you can't always wait for the best equipment. You can't always wait for the perfect time. Sometimes you just got to get there and make a video. Right. Just go at it and see what happens, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then that went on for a while, and then I ended up uh, running into Cognito on them, and we made uh, a Destiny podcast called the Iron Lords Podcast. Mm-hmm. And we ended up converting that to a podcast called the Iron Lords Gaming, that which was regular everything. And then we went from that to uh, eventually, we was like, you know what? Iron Lords Podcast... Um, Let's just take because originally the podcast we have now is called the Iron Lord Gaming podcast. Mm-hmm. Uh, but we eventually just got rid of the gaming and just got rid of the Destiny podcast and replaced the overall podcast with the the uh, Iron Lords podcast. Yeah, yeah, well, that's that's really cool too because uh, you know it's it's definitely uh, grown and and now really seems like it's it's on fire and taken off really well and uh and your podcast uh, is uh quite well respected uh, all of the iron lords uh are and i think that's a, it's it's a, it's a big accomplishment you know it's not something you just you know walk into people are 
Most people are pretty smart and savvy, and they know what they like. It's okay. I apologize for that. No yeah, worries at all. Bad over. What did you say? Uh, I said, I said, you what you built with uh, with the Iron Lords. Uh, you know, you have a, a really good uh, set of uh, a crew that's uh, that's well established, and now people, you know, seem to respect everybody that's uh, that's on the panel. And uh, you know, like you know, it's a it's a it's a big step that you have have gone to. Let's yep. uh, let's take things back to to your gaming experiences. Let's 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 kind of backtrack to that. Like, what was your first experience with gaming, and what you know? How did you? Um, I guess. Was it PC? Was it arcade? What really got you into gaming? It was kind of um, Nintendo. And I don't remember exactly. My mom claimed I had a, an, an NES, but I don't remember that. Right. I, I must have been like five or six. Um, the first console that I remember like me specifically having was the N64. Mm -hmm. uh, but I do remember playing the older consoles at other people's house. I remember playing the Sega. I remember playing... Um, the Dreamcast, because my, my cousin Marty had a Dreamcast. Uh, but I don't remember ever owning any of those consoles. But I do remember owning the N64. And that's that's pretty much uh, where I would say. I would say that like the most memorable ones is like mm -hmm. the original uh, PS1 with, with Final Fantasy. I think that's probably where my roots would truly be. Like without Final Fantasy, there's a good chance I wouldn't even be gaming. Wow, yeah, it, it, it's a landmark game, that's for sure. Yeah, but I think after that, I went to, I was in the Xbox for, uh, for I was in PlayStation 2 for a little bit because they had like backwards compatibility with the PS1. Mm -hmm. And I remember seeing a game called Fable and I ended up jumping into the Halo franchise, uh, to the to the Xbox franchise. I played Halo before I played Fable, but Fable grabbed me more. And mm -hmm. so I, I got like the the green Xbox, the original Xbox, the oh, green yeah, one, yeah, the Master yeah. Chief Collection one. That's cool. Well, the Master Chief one. And then I remember for a while, um, I was just like playing Game Boy and stuff like that. I wasn't I was playing a lot of Pokemon. That's pretty much about it. I didn't have a console for probably two or three years. I was just mm -hmm. playing like handhelds and stuff like that. I would play like occasional like Super Smash Brothers with my cousins or something. Mm -hmm. uh, but I remember when the 360 came out, and I didn't get one at, at at the start. I got one when Fable 2 launched with the 360. I remember going over to my friend Nathan's house, and he was uh, going over Brightstone on that giant bridge that's over Brightstone in Fable 2. And I was like, I need that. And I remember uh, like next week after that, buying uh, a 360 just for Fable. Yeah, it's a, they're great games, man. Um, I, I assume you're in, you're looking forward to the the new one that's in the works. As long as they don't mess it up, yeah, yeah. Hopefully, they'll keep that British humor. Right? So that was a gem for me. Yeah, I, I love actually, the. Uh, go ahead. I actually feel like Fable. You can have the British humor in there, mm -hmm. but I feel like it needs a dark atmosphere. And, and to me, some of that that British humor won't work in a dark atmosphere. Right. Uh, you know, you can still have the emote will in there. Like, you know, there's a lot of people that love that stuff. But I feel like yeah, when when you ask people that are huge Fable fans, what's their favorite things? They talk about the cause and effect system, how the weapons morph with you, mm -hmm. uh, you know, the world building that Ambrium has. Like, that's what I feel like is the core of Fable. And I understand people want that humor. But I feel like if they built those other ones on another level, people would be upset that that Fable or that that British humor isn't there like it used to be, but I feel like in order to evolve the brand mm -hmm. to be like that next Witcher style type of game, oh yeah, you do kind of have to have a serious, darker tone. Definitely, I and I agree with that too. I think it's a you know because like you said to move the franchise forward to where hopefully this will you know this won't just be a one and done that this will be a you know really rebuilding of the franchise. Um, and, and maybe the I guess the the British humor part. If it's done like slight moderation, things that, like an ode to like you can kick chickens and crap like that. That's just you know that kind of seems to be to your detriment or whatever, or to you know to 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 be the bad guy in the in the in the storyline. That could possibly work as long as they don't overdo it or overplay it. 
Yeah, yeah. Cool. So um, with that, um, I guess uh, gaming uh, from there, you you got you went on to um, I guess the the newer consoles and uh, and what 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 kind of games are you kind of into? Uh, I guess or, or I should even better yet say like in the last a few years. Uh, when you guys started with the Iron Lords, um, well, even a little bit longer than that. Sorry, uh, like what was it? What were you? What were you playing when the when the Iron Lords kind of came together? Obviously, I guess Destiny was one thing. I actually, the only reason I got into Destiny is because uh, I my brother got a because I already had an Xbox One at the time. Mm-hmm. My brother got a Xbox One with the Assassin's Creed Black Flag and Unity bundle. I remember that mm-hmm. and. Yeah. It was a dual code, like they weren't separate. Like you unlocked one, it unlocked both. Mm-hmm. And I remember Carl was like, "You sit," and he's like, "You know what? You're going to keep talking this smash, this uh, smack on on Destiny. You know, I'm I'm a gift it to you, and we we you going to try it, and then after you play it, you could continue your slaughter if you want to, your <laughs> slander." So I was all right, and I was like, "Well, I don't feel comfortable just taking that without giving you anything." So I ended up giving him that uh, Assassin's Creed Black Flag and Unity code. And what's funny is I don't even. I don't even know if he ever used it. Like, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, I, I think I was a huge Assassin's Creed fan. I, I liked, you know, Halo. I liked a lot of first-person shooters back in the day. Like, um, you know, Battlefield. Um, I was huge into that franchise for a while. Battlefield 3 and 4. Mm-hmm. Uh, Bad Company 2. Uh, I think the, the older I... Because I always enjoyed games like XCOM. And I think those were just, like missing the roots of final fantasy because they went away from turn base mm-hmm. so i think that was like a little bit of me being able to get that turn base back but i think after a while i ended up go like entirely going into that like i like fire emblem you know when i see when we go to to any type of like event like pax east or something i have developers and publishers that intentionally send me those games because they know i'll cover them if i see that type of style of game Nice. And, uh, you know, uh, I I enjoy those things. Yeah, I would honestly say that I'm my most anticipated game that hasn't been announced is XCOM 3. I'm like, where is this game? This game has been missing in action for like five years. They're not making it because they gave us Chimera Squad and I really enjoyed that. But it's like I want a full blown sequel. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, yeah, I think that's where it was. And I kind of dropped the, the first person thing. Like I still play like RPGs. I still love RPGs. But I, I've I've learned that my attention span won't hold it to them like it used to. Like I can't mm-hmm. play. I've I've played The Witcher like five times. Never never beat it. Every mm-hmm. time I sit here and try to like, I'm going to actually play through The Witcher. Play through about five, ten hours pushing it, and then I drop it again. And, <laughs> and it's like I can see that it's a good game yeah. and its quality's good. I just can't bring myself to play it. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, some some games are like that, man. There's a uh... There's, there's a few games I, I'm sure that, that that I have in my archive that you know got started, got really good at, and then for whatever reason dropped off. Sometimes you go back to a game, and you're like, I forget the controls. <laughs> you know, I don't want to sit and relearn them, so I just skip it. <laughs> you know, move on, kind of thing. So I, I get that, I get that for sure. So, uh, so I guess when uh, when you and uh, Lord Cognito start playing, um, how did uh, how did the conversations get to uh, you? You said you said he, they kind of invited you into their show that they already started, or how that work? No. Out? So what okay. happened? Because a lot of people don't know this, you would have to actually like watch way back then. ILP used to be on my channel. I used nice. to be the host, and after it was about 10, 15 episodes because we dropped the first like ten, mm-hmm. we eventually rolled away because Cog. Would, it's something happened where I couldn't be the host that week. I think I was sick and I couldn't talk that like something where Cog mm-hmm. had to been the host one week. And after Cog was the host that week, it was just like, all right, you know, with it, it, this guy, to go. like Cog's just a better host. And, you know, um, I, I've never really had like a huge ego. Uh, right. So I was able to put that aside and be like, you know, what's best for the show is Cog being the host. Uh, eventually I ended up bringing in the addict show where I'm the host of that. Mm-hmm. Uh, but, you know, we ended up bringing first it was us and uh lord sleet and lord um swat and you know time constraints uh you know commitment issues because people don't realize how hard it is to get people to come in and come out weekly to do shows right uh, we ended up happening to uh they couldn't do the show anymore so we ended up bringing king and Saul, and that's why i always 
like really appreciate that I got three other people that's just as dedicated to this as I am because that's very hard to find people that's dedicated and not mm-hmm. only dedicated to continue the dedication to doing it month out, year out. Yeah, yeah. And it and it shows, man, you guys really put together a great product and it's uh it really is uh it's good. And it's you know, like you said, you you guys all bring something different to the table and yet when when you guys are together it's like friends buddy groups getting together and just hanging out and that's what uh, that's what really makes it nice yeah so you know i i think things are going pretty good right now you know we're really pushing monetary value this year iop we always reinvested everything back into the show and we want to you know, obviously the 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 end game is to do this on a big production scale where we're right. doing this full time and you know this year we, we're we're pushing more of that because we we do want to do this as, as content creators. We want to be a, I wouldn't say we want to be like kind of funny, but we want to be in that vein. You know right. what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And you know, obviously, uh, we at the beginning when we were really looking at the beginning of this year, where we were looking at ways to improve the podcast. One of the things we we saw is like, look, we're 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 slacking in like Patreon and stuff like that. You know, we can really improve in these areas and improve our monetary value in general and Mm -hmm. you know that that's that's the main goal right now is to do that i i do want to start giving more like voice actors and stuff a spot on the show because i feel like they are not utilized enough that's Uh, cool for instance like the uh star wars survivor i just beat that last night and i'd love to have the actor that played cal on the show because i think he did a phenomenal job uh, you know, I got a bunch of ideals uh, that that are rolling around. You know, what's funny is like people would like kind of it act like I'm I was just put on the podcast to like appease a certain crowd or something like that. And it's just like a lot of like Colin Moriarty. I would say he's like one of the big ACG. Like I was responsible for bringing a lot of these people onto the show. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, we've had multiple devs on that I just blind messaged and they were willing to come on, and it's just like. Look, IOP is a complete commitment. Like it's everyone brings everything to the show. And it bothered me for a while because it's like, you know, I, I didn't get invited to a lot of shows, but they had no problem coming on our show. Right. And, and it was just like, you know, that, that's the reason why I, I just fell back. I, I don't know if people know this. I don't go on shows often. And yeah. I got to the point where people are asking me and I was like, nah, you know, like we good. I, I'm good. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, and, and, and to be honest, I've actually, um, just the way the Twitter set up, you have to be followed back, uh, sometimes for message to kick in. That's the way people set it up and that's fine. Uh, and yeah, uh, I set it up that way because, uh, I was getting a lot of harassment every, every time me and King disagree on something, his yeah. posse comes after me, man. <laughs> they come <laughs> after me. And I remember I got into, um, a little back and forth with, uh, Paris Lily and their people and oh, their people funny. came after me. Oh my so goodness. I was like, I, it, the I remember me and King got into it over the Starfield release date because mm-hmm. I wanted more Starfield gameplay at that particular E3. Mm-hmm. I had like twenty messages in an hour. They're saying this is why Xbox is in the state it's in, and it's sitting there saying you guys are. Uh, well, they were talking to me specifically, right. like you're nothing but down uh, by uh, you know uh, Doomsday, and uh, like you're. It's just ridiculous what people yeah. do over some over some video games. Well, yeah, but I I can definitely see why you would would, would shut that off. But um, but but the the thing was though, I eventually uh, you know, it got to the point where I was like, you know what, well, you know what, I'm just gonna I've had I had cog on. And I was like, just thought I'd say, hey, just let him know that I'm interested in if he's interested in it. And 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 thank you so much for uh, for agreeing to come on today because I wanted I like I said I like. Uh, you guys, the, the chemistry between all of you, and um, and you really, it, it does take all four of you to really put on the best show. Well, you know, I always said I might disagree with a lot of people in the industry. I might disagree with some takes. Mm-hmm. I might disagree with how they run content, how they run podcasts. But the only thing I care about at the end of the day is the passion. If I see the passion for for games, passion uh, for this product that we all pretty much keep our ear to the ground with news outlets mm-hmm. uh you know rumors and that 
then you you're right by me in in, a, in that sa- in that same way because it's like look we might disagree and stuff but if I feel that passion I know you love this and we just disagree that's one thing uh, but nice. if, if if you're just doing stuff uh, you know because you know it get clicks that's when I kind of like separate myself from people and I can see that for sure man I I definitely agree with that a hundred percent um I'm not here to be a fanboy i have all the systems i'm here you know because I, I enjoy gaming and the community is what i really really have fallen uh, kind of in love with really that it's uh, there's a lot of great people out there and podcasters out there you know when i was a kid growing up you know we'd watch saturday morning cartoons and we'd watch you know stuff after after school we'd watch you know what ultraman or whatever reruns or whatever they had on on tv and time you know but my son when he as he's growing up what does he do? He's watching YouTube channels and people playing games. I'm like, what? It was all, it was all it was like, ah, what is this? You know? And then after a while it was like, I get it now. I, Cause that's what I do now. <laughs> I watch content creators and people that, you know, are passionate about gaming just like me. So and I find it fascinating. That's why I did the show was to find out more about the people that make it. So, so I guess let's, let's, uh, let's get into um, you guys. Uh, you all got together and then um, I guess, on the journey uh, to, to where you are now, you um, you guys had to. Um, um, I guess I say that. What what what? Let's take this one at a time. What made you decide to to, or not necessarily you, but as a group, to do the shows um, for so long? I mean, in other words, they they run a long time. Sometimes four or five hours. Uh, community's part of it. Uh, yeah. You know, if you're reading. 20 30 super chats after every topic uh that tends to pro- we probably spend 45 minutes to an hour every podcast reading super chats yeah and we're never gonna not read them because yes. uh our community respects us they they donate money just to uh so they could be part of the show we're gonna read those so that That's extended awesome. it and then you know we we ended up being too much on our intros and i still feel like we can approve on our intros we don't need to spend an hour on intros uh, but it is what it is. Then, you know, when you put combat talk in and, you know, they, these might not seem like a lot, but when you keep adding these layers over over each other, mm-hmm. it does eventually extend to, and then you got to consider more people showing up. And I feel like even if it's just us four, we find a way to go for three to four hours. I don't know how that happens. It just <laughs> When you have people on and you have that good of a chemistry, yes, it's just going to be a long show. There's just no way around it. And, you know, especially covering everything if you know we just covered xbox or maybe just playstation it wouldn't be as long mm-hmm. but we'll recover we everything and we break down stuff in multiple different directions and we're all very aggressive personalities so you know we we do give each other like room to talk and stuff but when when, when you have the kind of personalities we have like you know we have a lot to say on the majority of these topics mm-hmm. uh, i've made it a joke when it comes to like when it comes to any kind of handheld thing that's not the switch like steam deck and stuff it's like that's the only time you won't really hear me talk about stuff is like that i'm not really the biggest fan of streaming mm-hmm. i don't like talking about the the activision deal as much anymore because i feel like that's that's wearing it's uh it's mental state on me yeah I, I i agree with that for sure and i guess what to clarify when i meant that the long shows it's not necessarily that they're because there's times when you're watching and i'm watching and i'm sure people at home are watching they don't feel like they're three to four hours long. You know what I mean? That because it's mm-hmm. the flow is good. The chemistry is good. And like you said, you're engaging your audience. So, so it's, it's, uh, I guess it's kind of a bonus that if you actually get to go longer, because then you're able to kind of focus in more on, on yeah, your audience just, and what they we want. We ain't never do another seven hour show. That, that was <laughs> rough on me. I, I literally just... went to sleep after that show. I know people feel like, Oh, you just sat down and spoke for seven hours. I don't know how I was physically drained, but I was. Yeah. Yeah. Oh man. And, and it was, it was such a, uh, it was a surprise and, and actually a joy to, to, to be invited to, to, to speak to you guys uh, on that show. But, uh, but yeah, I, I, much respect for you guys, uh, for everything you guys do. Uh, and I know you hear that a lot, but, uh, but it's true, man, because it's, uh, it's, it's something that we all enjoy from you. It's like, I always tell people, cause people always ask me, you know, Adam, what, what can I do to make a podcast? And it's like, look, the most important thing is the is the energy and the the chemistry between people. Uh, you got to find people that are, that actually can commit to something like that because that's not a very easy commitment. 
Mm-hmm. And you know, you got to just build. It's 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 like a house. You know, we started out with half a brick, and now <laughs> we we we're close to having a full house built. It, obviously, yeah. there's still in the house that we got to build too, but it just it takes time. Yeah, I, you know, I when we you. first started these podcasts, I went back and looked. They're like an hour and 40, 30 minutes. And, and after wow. enough time where we started feeling comfortable with each other, uh, you know, and then not to mention the inside jokes delay the podcast and it makes it going on 15, 20 minutes. <laughs> it's just years and years of inside jokes adds on a lot. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and sometimes you guys let us in on those, and that's kind of funny yeah, too. Like we one of the first E3s that I went to with uh King, yeah, yeah I think it was the he been on the podcast six months mm-hmm. and um we were arguing about a list there's a list that was published on xbox and i said that list is fake no it was playstation mm-hmm. i said that list is fake there's no more fake you can have than that list and um what's funny is he was so determined that he was right he printed it on the back of our e3 shirts like the list and, and oh, what's funny God. is like when I was right to this day, I bring that up. I'm like, that, that's why sometimes we're in the podcast. I'm like, yeah, you're great at list, aren't you, King? Like, <laughs> that's funny. Do you still have that shirt? I don't. I was gonna say I've been ever, like three times like, since then. Hold it up. That'd be funny. It was like 2019 <laughs> or something like. That. Yeah. If 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 I knew the podcast was gonna be around in 2023, yeah. it would probably be like framed in my wall. <laughs> There you go. Part of a landmark. I like. I love it. I love it. I love it. So, um, so let's uh, talk a little bit about. Um, obviously, the the Iron Lords is very successful and and, you know, and hopefully continued growth. I, I I'm really surprised you're not already at a hundred thousand subscribers. And I'm it sure you will exposure, get exposure, man. And uh, you know, exposure yeah. costs money, and that's why we're trying to take you know uh, how much money the podcast generates uh, more seriously because. The more money we can bring in, the more we can invest into advertising. Mm-hmm. I think YouTube's actually putting their own advertising thing on the platform. So, you know, uh, do whatever we can to, to expand. We're on TikTok now. We do shorts weekly. Yeah. We do whatever we can to expand. That's awesome. That's awesome. But I, I guarantee you're going to get there. I, I have faith in you. So, we're, so with we're that. Almost 15 now. Yeah, that's fantastic. So, um, I guess how um, you, you were talked about your, your your show, the Attic Show. How how did that come about, and, and what exactly do you cover on there? Uh, it's pretty much Iron Lords podcast, and uh, it's every Wednesday mm-hmm. at um five p.m. And what I try to do is, unless it's huge news, like news I can't avoid, mm-hmm. it, I when I make a topic, I'm like, is the community going to expect this? Mm. And if they do, then I'll re talk about it. But for the most part, if IOP talked about it, I try my hardest not to have uh addict show talk about it. Uh, right. That's that's why I've always ran the show. You know, I've went through a couple co hosts. Originally, it was just me, and I ended up bringing in Hustle and Motivate. And then he added a leave after a certain amount of time. Right now, it's me and Dirt, mm. Dirt Griggity. Yeah. And uh, it's it's growing, man. It's growing. I think we uh did like a 5,000 show last week. Nice. And, you know, it, that that's that's what I like. See, I like seeing progression. You mm-hmm. know, me and King were actually doing a an entertainment anime show too. It's called R and R with the Lords. It's Tuesdays at five p.m. Nice. And it's where we just go over like the news outlets that happened uh, for that week for a particular uh, anime, movies, TV shows. I know they just casted Margaret. Uh, I think that's her name for. Um, supposedly to be the invisible woman and fantastic four so we'll talk about stuff like that that's cool that's cool Inter- entertainment is it's it's all part of it man because gaming is a big part of entertainment and and movies and stuff they sometimes they get intertwined i love it yeah and once once i see the uh r&r grow to a point mm-hmm. do a couple hundred then i'll probably switch it over to its own channel because right nice. now uh it's on the ilp channel and i feel I don't like cross promoting to that level. I I prefer, I don't mind cross promoting to the platforms, but I don't like cross promoting on our channel. Like Mm -hmm. I, if I had my way and I don't think it's, it's developed enough. I would have it on its own individual channel because there's going to be gamers. Don't care about movies. going to be movie. People don't care about games. Correct. And it's, it's better to have everyone in their own stream. Like, Yeah. 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 I, I get you. I get you. Um, well, as we, uh, we'll kind of, uh, 
we're not going to make this a, a super long episode because uh, we I, we both know that you have uh, you have some reviews and stuff you have to get on to um, tonight. Uh, but I do want to take a few minutes if you if you if you have the time uh, to um, to talk about um, I guess some of the the current state of gaming. Now I don't want to necessarily blow it way up and ABK everything, but but as far as like you know, no, you can talk I, about any of that I, stuff. How, how how do you think things are going right now in gaming and, and where do you see it as we come into, you know, to, to the end of the year? Um, right now I feel like gaming is in a good spot. I do feel like Xbox has a lot of improvement and they need to uh, make broad statements. I feel like they, they've kind of put the bar very low here mm -hmm. recently. And I think, especially with what I was seeing on Redfall earlier, I, I think they need to really grab that, grab that situation and just learn from it it's like you know we we don't want 30 frame games we want 60 frame games we mm -hmm. we want quality games but at the same time we do want those passion projects but you got to learn the difference between a passion project that's going to be successful and one that doesn't look like it's going to have an audience and mm -hmm. i think i think for xbox that's my biggest uh thing for them you know maybe straight up that management a little bit i do think there's some miscommunication going on PlayStation, I just want them to say something at this point. I yeah. think I feel like PlayStation has been very quiet, and I think a lot of it has to do with the ABK deal. And um, I just want I want to know more about the roadmap of PlayStation Five and mm -hmm. Nintendo. I they're doing everything right, but I just feel like they need a whatever their next Switch is or Switch Pro or Switch Two, like has basic features that's been around since the 2010s <laughs> like i, I want to be able to message people mm -hmm. i want to be able to do invites on, on, on the core system itself and i have to go out and out so, like even if you have to talk to discord and, and and my make discord on the software itself right it, it, it's just you know I, I think besides that and when it comes to third parties i think if anything third parties have like disappointed me most than anything else because even though Xbox has been missing it here a little bit, uh, mm -hmm. you know, we'll have to see what happens in Starfield. Love God of War. Mm -hmm. I'm going to love Zelda, I assume. And, and to me, like, we don't really see the same Ubisoft we see. I remember when I used to love Assassin's Creed, like, every year. And it just, now it's gotten to the point where I feel like they're just copy and pasting the Assassin's Creed formula. You right. know, where can we take this now? Let's, let's take it back to Egypt, like they did with Origins. Uh, EA, we don't really i mean if they finally fixed battlefield which is cool but that's another big issue we have in the industry is where people feel these publishers and developers feel like they can just release anything in any kind of state and fix it later mm -hmm. there's a, and i think is i don't like government outreach but at this point if they keep doing that that's the only option i could see is some kind of re restructuring or or or, or restriction or, or something man i, I feel like remember when what was that game? Uh, Cyberpunk came out. Oh, yeah. That that PlayStation pulled it off their store. Yep. I feel like that needs to be... If your game is is broken to a state... Now, obviously, not like on PC, maybe, because Jedi Survivor was pretty broken on PC. But on consoles, it worked decently fine for me. Mm -hmm. I had a couple crashes, a couple issues. If, you're, if your system is doing so... If your game it does so, a certain amount... Just no no warnings, just pull it off the store. And, and yeah. I feel like after a couple years of that, these publishers will be like, you we can't release this game broken because they will pull our game from the stores. And, and that that's the biggest statement you can give to them. It's like yeah. you can't even sell your game if your game's broken. That's a good point. I do like that because hopefully it'll get them to where they're uh they they focus on the end game instead of you know, instead of just trying to rush things out. Yeah, I think that that's the biggest problem with the industry right now. I cannot, and and it's getting worse and worse. Every game it seems is 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 busted in some way on one of the platforms. Doesn't have a very good running syst, uh, state, and it's just like we're giving these companies too much leeway. Yeah, yeah, I agree with you, one hundred percent. Well, I guess as as we as we start to wrap things up, I I, I was a question I like to ask uh, everybody, and you can give me more than one answer. I'll just tell you that now. But what's a game that isn't out yet that's coming out that you're most looking forward to? Starfield. Yeah, that's that's it. The yeah, big one. So I I'm a huge Bethesda fan. I loved mm -hmm. Fallout Three. I loved. Uh, I didn't mind Fallout Four. I thought it was a good like action first person game, mm -hmm. but I didn't think it was a good Fallout game. 
kind of like how I feel like about Breath of the Wild. I felt like Breath of the Wild was a good exploration action game, but it wasn't a good Zelda game. I mm. loved, even though that the outer uh, that Obsidian made Fallout New Vegas, they still made it with the ideal of what was going on in the Fallout universe. So, you know, I love the Fallout games. I love uh, Elder Scrolls, Oblivion, Morrowind, S- Skyrim. I remember taking turns playing RuneScape in, a, in a Oblivion with my cousin what, when I was like 12, 13. And mm-hmm. it's just like, this is the first game they've made that's not Fallout or Elder Scrolls since I've been alive almost. Mm-hmm. So it, it, it's like, I really want to try it. Yeah, yeah, I'm with you, man. I'm, I'm really looking forward to it. And with the whole mod scene, that uh, the potential is there that it could be something that can be and probably really after that would be Fable. It. Yeah, yeah. I was, I was gonna, I was gonna, I was wondering if that was gonna be on there. Yeah, yeah. That, I'm with you. That Fable uh, definitely is, a, is another good one. And I think that's the reason I stay on the Xbox platform is even though they they do a lot of things I I, I scratch my head for, mm-hmm. like they got some of like Elder Scrolls Six. Most likely, that's going to be a, an Xbox exclusive. It's coming on the ecosystem. I love Fable. That's going to be there. I still love Halo, regardless the missteps of Halo Infinite. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, Hellblade's not my cup of tea, but I can see why people love that. Like, you know, until they start getting these games, that's when I'll make my final judgment. But right now, as I like, look, I've, I came this far down the river. I might as well just let it drift the rest of the way. <laughs> <laughs> oh, goodness. I'm with you. I'm with you on that. <laughs> with that said, excuse me. Sorry about that. I mean to cough on Mike. Um, let's uh, let's tell everybody where they can uh, reach out to you uh, and uh, where they can find your shows and when they're available, uh, so people can uh, can know when to catch the Iron Lords and uh, Lord Addict and everything else that you do. So you can find me on uh, Iron Lords podcast uh, every Sunday at one p.m. on the Iron Lords podcast channel. Uh, on that same channel, you can find me on the Attic Show, uh, where me and uh, Dirt just go over the latest stuff that happens that week. Or pretty much anything I want to do. Sometimes I'll literally just tell Dirt in the last minute, oh, I scrapped the whole show. We're ranking games today. <laughs> Love it. Uh, so, you know, that. And then you can catch me on my own personal YouTube channel, Gaming Addict. I've been popping a lot of content on there. But trying to do like Monday through Friday, day a uh, video a day. Nice. And, uh, you know, today I woke up and was like, I need to make a video. I was like, but I think the Redfall scores are coming out. So I might want to wait for those. Yeah, because uh, I want to make the same video twice, so I might as well wait for that video. Right, uh, you can find me on Twitter at Lord Addict I L P, and uh, you know I definitely appreciate the invite. It's been a fun show. Oh man, thank you so much for being on here, uh, and all the links uh, and will be in the description below on everything that we're on. Uh, of course, the uh, the YouTube channel, the Spotify, uh, iHeartRadio, and iTunes will uh, all be in the description. We'll have the links there, so easy for people to find and click on. And make sure you not only hit the subscribe button, hit the bell button, so you're notified as soon as that content is available. Lord Attic, thank you again so much for being here. Greatly appreciated, sir. Loved having hey, you on. I appreciate the invite. Awesome, awesome. And thanks, everybody, for tuning in to Outbreak Gamers.